Hey guys, I'm Sebastian. I'm going to show you um, just a spin on one of the exercises that you might have seen before for back pain, for lower back pain that um, maybe wasn't taught this way. Um, I'm bringing this to your attention because if you're still suffering, if you're still looking for videos on back pain, you're probably still suffering, quite honestly. So uh, allow me to maybe put my spin on things to see if this makes um, a change with you. And if it makes a change, perhaps you might find a better solution. So this one is called windshield wipers. Um, I apologize, I don't have a cameraman here today, so I'm gonna do my best to make everything still visible to you, but not uh, so there's too much editing for me. So windshield wipers, is it's an excellent exercise if the exercise is needed, I'll start with that. However, rotation of the spine is not always helpful, and so usually collecting good information in the beginning, such as does turning bother you? If turning bothers you, especially unprotected, then this might not be the right exercise for you. In that case, we have a tons of different videos on exercises and stretches, which work very well for back pain if you collect the information. So what I like to have people do first with this is rather than just kind of passively going back and forth or just stretching like this, usually I like to have them stiffen up a little bit or take the hands and use them as rudders. And you kind of push into the ground so that your elbows are especially are sticking into the floor and your elbows are kind of like the kickstand. They're slowing things down. You try to get as close as you can to the floor without losing the contact over here and using this as your guider, as your rudder. And so you're gonna notice that the further you get with your knees, the more your elbow has to save you or else you'll fall, okay? And so we're slowly gonna go from side to side. You can do hands up or hands down, whatever feels more comfortable. Um, but the fact of the matter is, the more you have to push and slow your knees down, the more your belly will start to work. When the belly starts to work and protect against rotation of the spine, if it's painful to do, then your body will build a tolerance to rotation because we're actually um, improving the endurance and the ability of the body to control the rotation. Uncontrolled movement is like driving a quick car without brakes. So, Make sure you built money in the budget for the brakes. So we just do about 10 reps of this, and every time just pay attention to what your hands are doing and see how close you can get without actually touching the ground. Okay, that's number one. So the second thing I like to do is this, it's the scorpion. Okay, you've seen, probably seen the scorpion before. It kind of looks like a real nice bendy exercise. I'm gonna show you going, um, I'll, go, I'll go both directions at some point. So I like to put the hands out a little bit and again, the same kind of thing applies with the rudder system here. Actually, I'll go, to, I'll go this way first. So when we go this way, I want to see that, the body, that you're sticking the hands to the floor as you're driving the heel to the sky. Okay? Right here, I kind of feel like I'm at a sticking point here. So I, can, I don't want to really let go of the floor. I want to bury harder into the floor here as I challenge the hip range backwards. You're going to notice that as you drive the heel, again, this in this case, towards the camera, my left butt cheek will start to work. That's what I want. As I push harder into the floor, my belly will start to work. That's what I want. Now, if you suffer from shoulder issues, this might not be the right exercise for you, but if we generally have a healthy upper body, this is a good one to add. You also get a nice hip flexor stretch in the upside leg, you're getting a little core work, you're getting a little bit of glute work, and you're getting a little bit of ab work. So all very beneficial things. And so, again, just to reiterate, what's the difference? What's the difference of what we're doing here versus what you might have already known? Floor tension. Simply put, it's, it's floor tension. Can you, can you use the floor to support you? The whole point is you need to use the floor to control movement because unsupported movements, unsupported flexibility exercises in people who are suffering from ongoing back pain tend to not really work well because you're kind of wringing the spine out. So again, there's, these are, you can do those in certain circumstances, but if they're not working for you, they're not working for you. And it's just taking a logical approach with this. If you've tried something for two weeks and it's not working and you're like, hmm, I think it's kind of maybe getting, like if you have that thought about whatever you're doing, it's probably not the right thing. And I tell patients all the time when they come in, look, if we don't pick the right thing for you or if you don't do them well, in two weeks you're not going to have any change. But if we pick right and you do the work, you're going to have a really good change. Um, people's people's uh, ranges change, but a lot of times it's not uncommon to have people feel 
super good within about a two week period. They're not perfect and they're not able to do everything I want to do yet because pain, or reduction of pain and restoration of function don't go hand in hand always. There's a lot of people out there who have no pain but are deathly afraid that their back is weak and don't return to function. So those are different timelines and usually reduction of pain is people's first goal. It's a great first goal, but it should be a short-term goal. After that, I encourage you to think about what you would do with your body if you didn't have any problems whatsoever, like you had, like you had the body of like a teenager, had no thought in the world of having, you know, like hurting yourself. What would you do? Take that, take a sticky note, put that on your mirror or wherever you look every day, car, dashboard, whatever, and just encourage yourself because getting to that point for many people is very possible if they're not asking for something extreme. Like if you're looking to be like a break dancer in your 70, that's a little bit harder. But if you're looking to, you know what, a realistic goal is that like I'd love to start running again. That's possible. It's possible for a lot of people. Um, now, are they going to be a uh, um, an Olympic athlete? Probably not, right? So just put a goal up and just remind yourself that pain is just the first step. If you're looking to build the life that you want, you just have to take life by the reins and see which target what you want, okay? We're here to help, again, uh, Sebastian at Performance Place Sports Care. Um, we're in Huntington Beach, California. We do help people um, virtual and through videos and stuff, so just reach out to us, and that's why we have a ton, like we have easily over 500 free YouTube videos you can dig through. We have, gosh, a thousand YouTube po uh, Instagram posts. Those are all the things free that we offer. Um, and sometimes we do free webinars as well. So just visit our website. You can email us and uh, we'll direct you to the best thing that we possibly can. Um, we can take our conversation private that way. At least we're not shouting over other people on social media. So uh, just email us info at p2sportscare.com. Again, info at p2sportscare.com or just call us 714-392, that's wrong, 714-502-4243, 714-502-4243. We'll do our very best to direct you in the right direction um, and hopefully get you out of the weeds here pretty quickly. So looking forward to talking um, uh, in private. See you soon. Subscribe, like, and share.